My name is Jack Nichols here in the commentary box. Alongside me is James Gornall. And here's how the calendar is progressing. We're into the final throws of the season now. After this weekend at Paul Ricard, we only have the Hungara Ring and Monza remaining in this 2012 Formula 2 season, which is currently being led in the championship points by Luciano Bacchetta. It's beautifully sunny here. 30 degrees track temperature, 27 degrees air temperature. Matteo Tuscia and Marcus Palmer on the front row of the grid then. We wait for the lights to come on. And when they do, this 19-lap race will be about to get underway. Here they come. It's going to be one to five. When the lights go out, racing will be underway. Here we go, and it's a poor start from Dan McKenzie, but Chet has got a great getaway. Palmer struggles and is now dropped into third place. Here comes Christopher Zanella up the inside, but it's a comfortable lead for Matteo Tusha as they head down into turn one for the first time. Who's going to be in second place? Palmer still has the inside line, so he's managed to recover a little bit, but Bacchetta has managed to hold on around the outside. Poor start from Dan McKenzie. Cracking start from Dino Zapparelli. I think he's up into fourth position of the start there. As they head down into turns three and four, Palmer is having to defend from Dino Zapparelli behind, and now Zanella and Marinescu go side by side. Marinescu trying to stick it around the outside, and he pulls it off. Good start from the Romanian. Him and Zanella still side by side, but that's perfect news for Tusha, who begins to spring clear now. Him and Bacchetta in first and second place. Fourth to second for Luciano Bacchetta. That's got to be great news for him. And, well, the safety car is out. So the safety car has been deployed. Bit late on the call there. Yeah, so, uh, and well, here's a look why. Plamen Kralev has gone round. And has he been collected? Oh, he's just got in the way of Alex Fontana. So the safety car is about to come in. A little bit of a, a moment down there towards the back of the field as they, as they all stacked up. Dino Zamparelli having to take in having to take some avoidance but the race is about to get underway once more Matteo Tuscia leads them across the line but Luciano Bacchetta has stayed with him fairly well as they come across the line there's only two tenths of a second between them past the commentary box window they come and will Bacchetta look towards the inside going down into turn one yes he will can he get the job done on the brakes no Tuscia confident enough to turn in Bacchetta not close enough is that going to allow Marcus Palmer the chance to attack no it's not Dino Zamparelli's dropped back from these guys a little bit. The top three making a short break as they come down into turn three then for the third time, but only the second time at racing speed. And here we're going to see David Ju. I believe that was a punt, actually. Yeah, he just got touched, didn't he, from uh, Plamen Kralev. It's only the slightest of touches. Didn't seem to do much damage to the front of Kralev's car. Here comes Dan McKenzie again, attacking to the outside this time, going down into the first corner, and he's going to hang it on around the outside. He pulls it off. Good move from Dan McKenzie. He moves up now into that fourth place, disposing of Dino Zamparelli. Now can he start to close in on Marcus Palmer in front? That's going to be the interesting thing to watch out for. Ten laps to go here in FIA Formula 2 and the battle is on for third place. Marcus Palmer goes defensive, coming down the Mistral straight. Dan McKenzie has the outside line and he's got it done under braking. McKenzie up into third position after a poor start. He's really trying to find some pace. Where's Zanella going? He's using one of the 163 configurations of this circuit and uh, he's got past Mihai Marinescu. But I don't think that'll be a legal move. No, I don't think so. It's 167 circuit Sorry. configurations, Jack. He's going to have to slow down, which so far he doesn't look to be doing. He's going to end up with a penalty if he doesn't do this, so he needs to slow down immediately and let Mihai go back past. I'm sure he will, because that wasn't a, a case of, oh, I'm not sure if, uh, if that was an overtake illegally, but well, we'll wait and see, because you're right, he hasn't backed up at all. Well, here we go. He's never had the move. He, he was ahead going into the braking zone but traveling a little bit too fast yeah course. exactly that's probably why he was ahead so we'll wait and see how that one transpires Dan McKenzie right onto the back of Luciano Bacchetta almost immediately now as he comes across the line if he can get past Bacchetta before too long he may even be in with a shout of winning this race because Matteo Tusha had that quick lap and pulled 1.2 seconds clear but the gap has then remained at that kind of level there's Zanella still ahead of Marinescu I don't understand that unless something's happened that we're not aware of well here's Axel Jeffries is he going to get past Hector Hurst on the brakes into turn one he sent it up the inside Hurst is hanging on around the outside hopefully this won't be contact we cut to the second camera angle and Hurst is holding on so good battling there they've both been passed by Fontana who has now been to uh, ninth position they've all started to drop Marcus Palmer a little bit Dino Zamparelli sponsored by Bottolino's Italian restaurant is starting to come back into the uh, 
into the action. In fact, he's very much in the action, trying to get past Marcus Pommer on the run down into the chicane. Jinx to the outside line. He's going to try and hang it on around the outside. Pommer has the inside line for the corner, but he can't hold on. And I think Dino Zamparelli has made it past Marcus Pommer. I think that was just about legal. He was pushing the four wheels white lines rule. It was legal. He had two wheels inside the white line. There was nothing wrong with that maneuver. Pommer doing some fierce defending there, going left and right a little bit, but I think just held back from doing anything too serious so Dino Zamparelli up into fourth place good move from the man from Bristol and Morocco who is uh, a Polish driver now he started off uh, licensed as a uh, as a German driver because they decided to move to Germany when Morocco was young in order to pursue his racing career as there was much better competition in Germany than there than there was in Poland uh, country that's really struggling to find his motorsport feet. Someone's struggling to make that corner is Mihai Marinescu. Simple mistake from Mihai. Locks up into turn 11. It is a difficult corner because you have to hit the apex twice and send it well out wide, but nevertheless... It's the sort of corner that you go in as fast as you are brave, and, and Mihai just took a little bit too much speed in. It's really struggling to slow it down, and once that begins to happen, you just it's, it's damage limitation rather than trying to go uh, particularly fast around the corner, so he did well to, to continue and only maybe lose one place. It's a drive-through for Christopher Zanella. We've just been informed via race control, so... Not surprising, really, that. I, 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 can't, I can't think why he wouldn't have given it back. He's just lost decent... Well, I say decent. He's just lost some points through a silly mistake. He should have let Mihai back pass, but clearly the red miss came down, and, and he's got a penalty because of... Into the chicane they come. At the end of the Mistral straight, and off goes Luciano Machetta. Straight on. Now, what's he going to do here? Because he's got to try and feed back in in second place. There he goes, stamps on the throttle, and is he, he's just about going to hold it. But uh, he was pushing hard on these final few laps. Luckily for him, he's managed to slot himself back in the middle. That would have been a difficult one. I wouldn't like to be the stewards right now, because it looks as though he's fed in correctly. Now, you have to imagine if there's a brick wall there, he would have hit it and be out of the race. So whether they'll give him any sort of penalty or not, I don't know. But Luciano did exactly what he should do in that situation. And the French Swiss driver is going to come into turn 15 for the final time. Shift down into second gear. There's a challenge on for second place, but it's not going to be enough. Matteo Tuscia will see the checker flag and will win for the first time in FIA Formula 2. Fantastic result for him and his friends and family and sponsors that have come to visit this weekend. It's second place for Luciano Bacchetta, third for Dan McKenzie, fourth for Dino Zamparelli. Great battle we had over second, third and fourth. Then we had Marcus Pommer in fifth. He's going to be a disappointed German. Kevin Morocca will be a satisfied ex-German. And uh, Zanella's having to defend here from Hector Hurst. He's managed to get past Hurst on this final lap. So Zanella will take eighth place across the line. He got past Hurst and Jeffries, I think, I think on eight, the final lap. Eighth actually is where he was going to finish if he stayed behind me, I'm Aradescu. Yeah. So, uh, it was worth a try then, wasn't it? Was it was worth a try. Matteo Tusha, aided by his mechanic, climbs out of the car and becomes the youngest winner in FIA Formula 2. Matteo Tusha, the winner of round 12 of the season. Fantastic performance from him. Very, very strong.